And away we go. All right, Hoka Kavu 3. We've got our instruments here to make sure we get accurate enough. Oh, yeah. Hoka Day, Hoka Day, Hoka Kavu 3. Full disclosure, this is not my first run in the Kavu 3s. You probably noticed they're already a little muddy. These are the shoes I wore yesterday from the hospital. So this is my second run in the Kavu 3s and I just cannot. So a very lightweight shoe. Let me throw it on the scale real quick for you guys before we take them out again. Uh, let's just put it in ounces real quick. My size, 6.4 ounces. So I also want to make sure I'm providing as accurate information as possible with a brand new uh, caliper. Is that how you say it, right? A caliper. So this measures in, um, in millimeters, in inches, uh, the outside diameter caliper thickness gauge. There we go. So it goes around the, uh, the collar of the shoe. All right, there we go. Okay, let's lace up. So here's what's, here's what's crazy, everybody. Yesterday, lacing up this shoe in the hospital, I almost said, that's not gonna work. It was way, way too tight through the upper. So if you have a high volume foot, meaning your foot is just, it's big. Like, and not, I don't mean like lengthwise. I mean, especially in the toe box area, the forefoot, the front of your foot, I could not believe how tight it was. But I'll give you a full, thought on what is happening through this toe box here in a minute but I it just it was a shocking like it was really like even watch this right right now as I'm putting it on like it's just it's one of the more challenging shoes to put on my foot uh, but that's anyway it's just part of the deal so all right super psych we're not going running quite yet we're gonna go pick up mama and Henry from the hospital come on let's go You might be on camera. We're reunited. We are reunited. Ah, we're back. Oh, we're back. The kid is back. I'm back on track. Thank you all for watching yesterday's vlog. Oh, that was a treasure, babe. That was a so, treasure for our lives. Oh, we'll get we'll get we'll get Henry in the shot here in a little bit. And away we go. All right, Hoka Cavu 3. We've got our instruments here to make sure we get accurate numbers out to all of you for my first impressions, not my full review. That'll happen after 50 miles. And yes, there it is over there on the shelf alongside the Elevon 2 from Hoka and the Mach 3 is down there. So I'll do a little comparison to those shoes as well. And let's do the twist test first. All right, definitely a neutral shoe. Very loosey-goosey doing a dance there through the midsole. Okay, let's dive in. Six millimeter drop. 26 millimeter stack height in the heel, 20 in the forefoot, but shall we confirm? Shall we confirm here? All right, so here's the caliper. Um, it's an outside caliper, which basically means I can uh, put these tongs, I'm just gonna call them tongs, around, wrapping around the collar of the shoe, or I should say over the collar of the shoe. And let me see here, so I'm going, hoping it says 26, and I'm sorry that you cannot see this. All right, sure enough, there we go, 26 millimeters. It's working, I can't believe, I'm a little shocked actually. So 26 millimeters in the heel, that is fun. All right, so we got some good numbers here with the caliper three, or sorry, the caliper uh, measurement tool. All right, so moving on to the weight of the shoe, we're looking at 6.9 ounces in men's size nine and 5.2 in women's size eight, as I already said. And for the upper of the Cavu three, it's a one piece 
knit upper, all right? Just one piece of knit, very comfortable, pretty durable heel counter, actually. Like it's, I, I expected it to be a little more flexible, but not at all. Like it's a, it's a pretty stout heel counter, and, but I am shocked based on how hard it was to slide my foot into the shoe that it doesn't have a pull tab like the Mach 3. See that pull tab on the back there, right there, right, right there? It would have been real nice, Hoka, if the Cabo 3 had a pull tab, just cause I don't know, okay, well, I'll just say it right now. Um, I think one situation in the shoe that just to be uh, aware of, if you have a really wide forefoot or a lot of volume, as I mentioned, I think already inside, a lot of volume to your foot, especially through your toes, uh, I don't know, this might be not the shoe for you. My foot's pretty narrow through my toe box, and, through my toes, and this toe box is just running a little narrow. But I will say because of the knit material, it's uh, flexible enough and forms to your foot well that I did not uh, feel uncomfortable. I didn't feel any discomfort with any like weird rubbing inside the shoe. And just so you know, like it's just the knit material. There's no extra liner inside the shoe. Like uh, it's just the knit right on your sock. So it, it's not that smooth inside the shoe. Just want to mention that as well. Let's see. Oh yeah, the tongue. There's no no separated tongue. It's just one, again one piece of material. Collar was fine, maybe a smidge of uh, slipping through the heel, just a little bit, but nothing crazy to speak about. Um, again, and my, this is my first time lacing up in this shoe. Oh, I should mention, coming out of the box, it kind of looks like a lifestyle shoe, or like a shoe that you would just go to the store in or something, but it is a running shoe, and I will get to my thoughts as to how I will use this shoe moving forward here in a minute. Uh, and I wanted to mention one other thing on the upper, oh yeah, no extra holes for the runner's knot. So if you like the runner's knot like I do, I was a little sad not to see those extra holes right here at the top of the eyelet chain to really just kind of get a nice lockdown feel around that collar that wraps, wraps around your ankle. So keep that in mind. For the midsole on the Cavu 3, it is an updated EVA. What does that exactly mean on a scientific or chemical level as far as the uh, the mixture that they're using to form this midsole, I don't know. I wish I had those specifics for you on a scientific level, but I don't know, but it is updated from the Cavu 2. And moving on to the outsole of the Cavu 3. I'm actually I'm actually really excited about the outsole. I'm, I'm usually not this excited about outsoles, but I think Hoka is being pretty innovative here. And in order to help keep the weight down, and like right now, I think I was getting 6.3 inside for my size. Now it's more closer to 6.7. Maybe I picked up some rocks out there on the run today, but to help keep the weight down, instead of putting rubber onto the outsole, which rubber is definitely heavier than this EVA foam, they've put a rubberized EVA outsole into the forefoot and into a little horseshoe here on the heel, which is going to increase the durability of this outsole and, but still keep the weight down. So I love, it, it's really, you can't even tell the difference unless you look really closely. Like the color is just a little different where the actual EVA midsole foam is really white and this is almost a little gray right through that forefoot and it's, it's very subtle, but I think it's a really nice uh, paying attention to detail. And okay, so my prediction for the durability of this shoe, I'm still gonna go a little lower, probably like that 300 mile range, but I'm, I'm really curious to see if you have the Cavu 3, if you take this shoe like past 250 miles, email me, because I'm really curious to see how this shoe will do, um, and uh, sorry, how this outsole will do uh, over let's say 250 miles. For my positive and drawback, positive is the weight. It's just fun. It's just a fun shoe to run in because it's so lightweight. The drawback, again, just that little bit of narrow narrowness through the toe box. Now, how will I use the Cavu 3 moving forward? Or another way to think about it, who is this shoe best for? All right, this is, a, this is where I'm a little perplexed, but here's my thought. If I was pressed for time and I needed to go, or you need to go get a workout in, let's say you have 45 minutes and you, there's, a, let's say there's a track about, you know, two miles away from this gro grocery store that you're parked at, you're going to jog in this shoe to the track for two miles. Instead of bringing a second pair of shoes for your track workout, you're going to keep the Cavu 3s on your feet and you're going to do eight by 400 meters around the track with 60 seconds rest and then you're going to jog two miles back to your car for your cool down 
that is how I would foresee using this shoe. Like it's a daily trainer, but it's such a, it's again, it's so lightweight and it just has that nice, it felt a little, um, not snappy, but just like a little bit of energy through the foot strike today where I was like, you know what? I think this shoe could pull off a very simple workout when I'm pressed for time on a track. And this is like, this outsole would just be perfect on a, on a Mondo track. So I will keep you posted over the next 50 miles as I, I'll take this shoe to like six minute pace, 545 pace and just see how it does at higher speeds and let you know after that 50 mile mark. All right, price point, hello, hello. A hundred and twenty dollars. A hundred and there we go. There we go. That's what we like to hear. I'm excited actually. I'm more excited about the Cavu 3 than I am about the Mach 3. Right now, a hundred percent, absolutely. And the Elevon 2 just is just a whole nother shoe. It's a long run shoe. It's for it's just a whole different type of shoe. So, all right, everyone, here we go. Question of the day. Um, what shoe would you use? for what I just described to you as far as how I foresee using this shoe moving forward, as far as jogging to the track, do a workout and jog home all in the same shoe. What shoe would you lean toward? For example, the New Balance Zante Pursuit comes to mind for me. And the reason I asked this question of the day is that keeping running simple, having one pair of shoes to accomplish different tasks is really nice. And when you get to the track, like I, I get it. Sometimes you're so busy, you, have, you, only, you literally have like 18 minutes to get a track workout in and you don't have time to be switching shoes and all that. So that's why I asked this question of the day. Can't wait to read your answers. Thanks for helping everybody out down in the comments. That's the vlog for today. Thanks for being here. First impressions of the Hoka Cabu 3. We'll get you that full review after 50 miles. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Oh yeah, let's toss it back on the right to the first impressions of the Mach 3. That'll be on the right. And then on the left, we'll throw it to the Elevon 2 first impressions. That'll be on the left. All right. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.